Hello and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today we're going to be talking about multinomial coefficients. So multinomial coefficients are a generalization of binomial coefficients. So let's first remember what binomial coefficients are. We've been talking about them quite a bit. n choose k is n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. And in general, we can generalize this to n choose any number of numbers, k1, k2, up to kj, whose sum is n, by writing down k n factorial divided by k1 factorial times k2 factorial up to kj factorial. So in this case, we have n factorial divided by k factorial and n minus k factorial, which add up to n. Here we have it divided by a whole number of factorials that add up to n. For example, let's compute the multinomial coefficient 10 choose 6, 2, and 2. This is 10 factorial divided by 6 factorial, 2 factorial, and 2 factorial. Notice that 6 plus 2 plus 2 does equal 10, so it's a valid multinomial coefficient. And we can write out the factorials and cancel just like we do when we compute binomial coefficients. Here the 6 factorial, let's can cancel that. And then the 2s go into the 8 and make it a 2. And then 9 times 7 is 63, times 2 is 126, times 10 is 1260. And so that's an example of a multinomial coefficient. And today we're going to see where multinomial coefficients come up in combinatorics. So let's also see how they generalize binomial coefficients to start. So the binomial coefficient, it may look like we would write 7 choose 3, but we can also write it as 7 choose 3 comma 4 as a multinomial coefficient with two numbers in the bottom. And when there's two numbers in the bottom, it just becomes an actual binomial coefficient. 7 choose 3 or 7 choose 4 are both equal to 7 factorial over 3 factorial times 4 factorial. In general, n choose k and n choose n minus k are both equal to the multinomial coefficient n choose k comma n minus k. And this reflects that symmetry of Pascal's triangle that we saw in recent videos. That symmetry can be generalized to multinomial coefficients by saying we can actually reorder the numbers in the bottom of the multinomial coefficient any way we want, and it doesn't change the multinomial coefficient. So for instance, 10 choose 6, 2, 2 equals 10 choose 2, 6, 2, and 10 choose 2, 2, 6, because they're both, they're all three of them are just 10 factorial divided by 6 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial. So one thing that multinomial coefficients count is anagrams. And we have seen this, this formula might look familiar because we've counted anagrams before using the division principle. So let's first see, again, how does n choose k count anagrams and then how do multinomial coefficients generalize that? So let's recall that n choose k, which is n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial, is the number of strings of k zeros and n minus k ones in some order, meaning it's an anagram of this word with k zeros and n minus k ones. It's a way of rearranging it. So to generalize this, let's look at the question, how many anagrams are there of a word that has k1 copies of the letter 1, k2 copies of the letter 2, k3, etc., up to kj of letter j. And to count this, um, we can use the multinomial coefficient formula, n factorial divided by the product of the ki factorials. And the reason is n factorial counts the total number of anagrams of a word with n different letters, right? So if we overcount by first saying, let's order them any way we want and pretend that all the letters are different, um, then we get n factorial. And we've overcounted by the number of ways we could rearrange all the letters that are actually the same as each other, which there's k1 factorial ways of rearranging the ones and k2 factorial ways of rearranging the twos and so on. So we overcounted by those number of ways of rearranging those letters that we actually didn't want to rearrange because they're not distinct. So that shows that this formula is actually, we could write it as the multinomial coefficient n choose k1 through kj. And again, it's important that k1 plus k2 plus k3 up to kj equals n in this case, because um, that's the total number of letters in the word. Let's look at an example. How many ways can we rearrange the letters of the word banana? And I'm going to keep this formula up here above my head so we can use it. OK, so how many ways can we rearrange these letters? Well, we have to determine how many letters of each type there are. The first type, say b, um, there's one b. And then the second type of letter is a, and there are three a's. And so we, we can set k1 to be 1, and k2 is 3, and k3 uh, for the n's, is, there's two n's, so that's 2. 
And so we have our numbers now that we're going to plug into the multinomial coefficient formula. And we notice 1 plus 3 plus 2 is 6, which is the total number of letters in the word. So it's 6, choose 1, 3, and 2, uh, multi-choose. And it's 6 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 3 factorial times 2 factorial. And let's cancel out the factorials as usual here. So it's 6 times 5 times 4 uh, times 3 factorial. So the 3 factorials cancel. And we get a 2 in the denominator. That Let's cancel that with the 4. And we get 6 times 5 times 2, which is 60. So we've counted the number of ways of rearranging the letters in the word banana by just plugging it into this multi-choose formula. Here's another example of the same form. How many strings in the alphabet 0, 1, and 2 have exactly three zeros, two ones, and three twos? So this is similar to banana, except instead of B, A, and N, we have 0, 1, and 2. And so, uh, so you can think how many total letters are there? 3 plus 2 plus 3 is 8. So 8 choose 3, 2, 3 is going to be 8 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial times 3 factorial. And after canceling some factorials, let's see what this is. 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Let's get rid of one of those 3 factorials and we just get a 3 factorial times 2 factorial in the denominator. 3 factorial cancels with 6. The 2 goes into the 4, and we get 5 times 2 is 10 here, times 56 is 560. So there's another example of counting strings using multinomial coefficients. OK, so another thing that we can generalize from the setting of binomial coefficients to the setting of multinomial coefficients is um, counting subsets. So remember that n choose k counts the number of k element subsets of 1, 2, 3 up to n. And we're going to generalize this in a way that's called ordered set partitions. And so let's first look at just 3 choose 2 counts the number of subsets of a set of size 3 of si that have size 2. So 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3 are the three ways of choosing a two element subset from 1, 2, 3. Now, we can alternatively think of that as instead of just choosing a subset, we're choosing a subset and its complement. So we're it's the number of ways to split 1, 2, and 3 into a two-element subset and a one-element subset. So, or in other words, number of ways of choosing a k-element subset and sp splitting off a k-element subset and an n minus k-element subset. That pair is uh, counted by n choose k. Those pairs are counted. So we can complete these pairs by saying 1, 2, and 3, or 1, 3, and 2 in the two different sets, 2, 3, and 1. These are all examples of ordered set partitions with two blocks, a block of size 2 and a block of size 1 in that order. And so we're going to show that multinomial coefficients actually count ordered set partitions, which is generalizing the subsets that n choose k counts. So what is an ordered set partition? An ordered set partition of a set A is a sequence of sets b1 through bj, or some j, of disjoint subsets, so there are no elements in common, and their total union is A, meaning we're just partitioning A into different subsets in an ordered way, um, where every element is in some subset exactly once. As an example, 2, 4, 5, and then the set 1 and the set 3, 6, these totally partition the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that's an example of an ordered set partition. Each of these numbers, 1 through 6, is in exactly one of these subsets. And here the subsets have block sizes 3, 1, and 2. So the question I want to ask is how many ordered set partitions are there that have block sizes k1 through kj? And it turns out to be this multinomial coefficient, n choose k1, k2, up to kj. So let's explore why this is. Let's write out some of the ordered set partitions of the set 1, 2, 3, 4 with block sizes 2, 1, and 1. OK, so we have a block of size 2, and then a block of size 1, and then a block of size 1 in order. And one example of this would be to put the numbers 1, 2 in the first block, and then 3 in the second block, and 4 in the third block. But notice, it's an ordered set partition. So it actually matters if I put 3 in this block or 4 in this block, or if I switch them, if I put four in the first block of size one and three in the second block of size one. Those are different possibilities. And so we can count this in sort of the same way we count sequences by saying how many ways can we choose what goes in the first block and then how many ways can we choose what goes in the second block and so on. 
So let's draw a little picture here of, uh, uh, to help us with our counting. So we have some block of size two. Let's actually make it empty here. Um, just to imagine, okay, we're gonna choose two numbers to put in that block, and then we're gonna choose the numbers for the other blocks in order. So first, there's exactly four choose two ways of choosing a two element subset from four things for the first one. Once we've done that, we have two elements left and we have to choose one to go in here. So that's two choose one possibilities there. And then finally, there's only one element left. We have to put it in there and one choose one ways. And rather than multiplying this all out, let's write it in terms of factorials. We get four factorial over two factorial, two factorial, times two factorial over one factorial, one factorial, times one factorial over one factorial, zero factorial. Zero factorial is one, so let's just not write that. That doesn't change the answer. And then let's cancel these factorials that we see coming in pairs in the denominator and the numerator of the next fraction. And what's left is four factorial times over two factorial, one factorial, one factorial. And this looks quite a lot like the multinomial coefficient four, two, one, four choose two, one, one. So in general, let's, let's look at how this argument works. The number of ordered set partitions of size k1 through kj is, you can count it by saying, well, there's k1 ways of choosing from, the, from all n elements, uh, n choose k1 ways of putting k1 in the first block. And then for the second block, we only have n minus k1 elements left and we choose k2 of them. And then we have n minus k1 minus k2 elements remaining and we choose k3 of them and so on until you're left with only kj elements left and you choose all kj of them because we're assuming k1 plus k2 up to kj equals n. So this all works out. And if we plug these formulas in to those factorial formulas, we have n factorial over k k1 factorial n minus k1 factorial times n minus k1 factorial over k2 factorial n minus k1 minus k2 factorial, which then becomes the numerator of the next one, right? n minus k1 minus k2 factorial over k3 factorial, and then you subtract k1, k2, and k3, and that's your next factorial. And you see we're gonna get a lot of cancellation here. So this goes on, and the n minus k1 factorial cancels here, this guy cancels with that guy, this guy's gonna cancel with the next fraction, and so on. And what you're left with in the denominator is just the k1 factorial, k2 factorial, k3 factorial, up to kj factorial. And so all in all, we get n factorial divided by the product of all those factorials, and that is the multinomial coefficient, n choose k1, k2, up to kj. Now let's see an example in practice of where counting ordered set partitions comes in handy. So say you have six different toys, they're all distinct toys, and you wanna give them to three children, and you wanna give two to each child to make it fair, but you don't know, you know which toys each child will prefer. So you just have to choose a way of giving two to one child and two of them to another child and two of them to the third child. So how many ways can you do this? Well, you can think of this as an ordered set partition because we have the six different toys, like we could label them say one through six, and the three children are our sets. And we're making blocks of size two to give to the three children. So let's write this down, let's label the toys one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the, um, as an example of a way of giving these out to the children, maybe we give the first child toys two and three, and we give the second child toys one and five, and we, get the, we give the third child the remaining toys, toy three and toy six, uh, four and six. Excuse me, we already gave toy three to child one. So that's an example of a way of distributing these toys to the three children. And we have to count how many there are. Well, those correspond to the ordered set partitions because the children are all different, child one, child two, child three. And so we could just do six choose two, 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 and that's six factorial over two factorial, two factorial, two factorial. And so let's cancel all these twos and we'll end up with six times five times three, which is 90. So there are 90 ways of distributing these toys to these three children in a fair manner. Let's look at another example now that shows how uh, ordered set partitions and anagrams are actually counting the same thing. So we, we saw that um, anagrams and ordered set partitions with certain restrictions are both counted by multinomial coefficients. So I'm going to show you how they're actually the same mathematical object in, by just writing them a little bit differently. 
So given an ordered set partition like this, let's think of the first set as saying what positions the first letter occurs in, in some word, and then this, what positions the second letter occurs in, and so on. So say I put an A in positions two, four, and five, and B in a position one, and C in three and six, I can write down a string here, an anagram, by saying, okay, number one is in the B set, so B is the first letter, and then two is in A, and three is a C, so I get A and then C, and then four and five are A's, and six is in set C, and so I get this, this word B, A, C, A, A, C, and in general, the anagrams of, a word, of this word with three A's and two C's and one B are exactly in correspondence with the ordered set partitions of block sizes three, one, and two corresponding to A, B, and C. And so you can really think of ordered set partitions and anagrams as the same thing. One more thing we want to generalize from the binomial coefficient case to the multinomial coefficient case, which is where multinomial coefficients get their name, is that the binomial theorem generalizes to the multinomial theorem. So the binomial theorem was about taking a binomial, x plus y, and taking it to the nth power. And we get this expansion in terms of binomial coefficients. So you take this, this row of Pascal's triangle as the coefficients. And when we, could, we could write this in summation notation as the sum as k goes from 0 to n of n choose k times x to the n minus k, y to the k. So you have the exponents of your multinomial coefficient down here, k and n minus k, um, being with a coefficient of n choose k. Now if you're multinomial coefficients, we take a multinomial, x1 plus x2 up to xj, and we raise it to the nth power, and its expansion is actually the coefficient of x1 to the k1 up to xj to the kj is the multinomial coefficient n choose k1 through kj. So as a, I'm not going to prove this here in this video, but you can see the textbook for, for more details, but as an intuitive way of thinking about it, if we're multiplying n of these mono, multinomials together, you want to choose, and, and you want to get k1 x1s and k2 x2s and so on, then you have to choose which factor each of the x1s come from and which factors each of the x2s come from and so on, and that's going to correspond to an ordered set partition. Of, of sizes k1 through kj, just where, where the actual factors are your numbers. Let's also look at an example here. x1 plus x2 plus x3 squared. It expands like this. So you have x1 squared, x2 squared, and x3 squared, and then twice all the products of two elements. Um, so you can get that just by expanding, but let's check that it agrees with the multinomial theorem. So 2 choose, zero, two, choose 2, 0, 0 is 2 factorial over 2 factorial, which is 1. That corresponds to this one up here that's getting multiplied by the x1 squared. And then two choose one, one, zero is two, two factorial over one, which is two. And that corresponds to this two up here because it's the coefficient of x1, x2, which has exponents one and one, and then zero on the x3. And so you can see how the multinomial theorem plays out in this example and in larger examples in general. Now let's use the multinomial theorem to prove something uh, combinatorially by plugging things in. So what if we ask how many ordered set partitions of one through n have exactly j blocks? So now there's no restrictions on what the sizes of the blocks are. I'm not saying there's k1 in this one and k1 in the next one and so on. Just you have j blocks of any sizes. How many ways can you make an ordered set partition of that form? Well, we can think of it as summing over all possible sizes just doing casework, right? By the addition principle, we're going to sum over all possible tuples k1 through kj that sum to n of the multinomial coefficient and choose k1 through kj. That should be the total. And now we can think of this also as we can always multiply a number by one a bunch of times. Let's multiply it by one to the k1 times one to the k2 up to one to the kj. Well, that's now plugging in one, 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 one into the multinomial theorem. And so we get one plus one plus one j times. Um, raised to the nth power, which is j to the n. Now, this looks like too nice of a formula to not have some combinatorial direct way of, of thinking about it. So an alternate uh, description of an alternate way we could have gotten this answer is that for each number 1 through n, you can just choose which of the j blocks that you put that number in. And so that's a, a combinatorial way of thinking about it, but I like plugging in all ones into the multinomial theorem as well, because it gives a nice connection that directly gives you that j to the n in an algebraic way. Okay, so now with that all being said, it is your turn 
And let's think about this problem. How many ways can you put 16 different colored billiard balls in the six different pockets of a pool table so that the corner pockets get three each, just the, the four corner pockets each get three, and the middle pockets each get two. So you're playing pool, and this, is, this actually goes along with the rules of pool because you have 15 balls usually in a pool setup, and then one white ball, that's the cue ball that you, um, you hit the other balls with. And so you're trying to get all 15 balls in the pockets in a certain way, and then you'll put the white ball in at the end. Um, so, the, so then try to get this distribution, how many possible pool games can end up with three in each of the corner pockets and two in each of the middle pockets. So that's all for today, and we'll see you next time.